Valentine's Day is a holiday meant to spread both romantic and platonic love to the special people in your life. Even those that dislike the traditions don't consider February 14th to be necessarily eerie or a disturbing day. At the same time though, whether it's due to passion or just coincidence, many unsolved cases actually occurred on Cupid's special day. These five cases lack the chocolates and roses you might expect and instead involve tragic ends of innocent people. Number 5 On February 14, 1986, Houston resident Stephen Jerry went through his usual routine of waking up and heading to work despite it being called the day of love. Stephen left his home after telling his wife Mary Lou goodbye for the day. As he later explained, she was still in bed when he walked out the front door. He went to work like any other day but became greatly concerned when he tried to call his wife several times and she didn't answer. It was unusual behavior for Mary Lou, according to him, and finally he was so worried that he called her mother, Maria, and informed her that she had not been answering her calls and requested that she stop by to check on her daughter, as well as help her set up for a Valentine's-themed party they'd planned for that evening. Maria agreed and headed to the house, but unfortunately she made a horrific discovery that most parents can't even imagine. She found that her daughter had passed away from wounds created by a firearm. Police arrived and the scene was investigated. Autopsy reports showed that the source of the wounds actually came from two separate guns, suggesting that two suspects were involved. Back at the crime scene, investigators found no clear signs of a struggle or a break-in, meaning that either Mary Lou knew her attackers or she was caught completely off guard and given no chance to fight for her life. In the early stages of the case, it's no surprise that Stephen became a main suspect. He owned many firearms, but none of them were confirmed to be the source of the attack. Stephen also had a solid alibi that he would have been at work at the time frame of the crime. His alibi seemed sturdy, but a deeper look into his day revealed otherwise. Apparently, he left work for a few hours earlier than usual, and during that time, he ran seemingly random errands. The next day, after the entire situation had unraveled, Stephen apparently went back to a few of the locations he'd visited the previous morning, which included a 7-Eleven convenience store, the post office, and a donut shop. During his second visit to these stops, he talked to the employees that were present and asked if they remembered him coming in the day before. Many of them did, but those that didn't were assertively reminded by Stephen as though he was trying to build his strange alibi. There was never enough to convict Stephen or find other possible leads. Instead of waking up to flowers and a love letter, the unfortunate Mary Lou didn't wake up at all on that tragic Valentine's Day, and her case remains unsolved. Number 4 55-year-old James Tolan and 33-year-old Carrie Bowden were employees of a computer software shop in Robinson, Texas when they had their lives taken from them on the fateful morning of Valentine's Day in 1989. A friend of Carrie's that was living with her at the time reported dropping her off at work around 8 a.m. According to her husband, Carrie wasn't scheduled for the day but decided to go in anyway. He was never given a solid answer as to why she chose to go in on her day off, especially considering that it was Valentine's Day. One thing for certain is that she would come to regret her decision. Carrie's friend reported to officers that before she left the city software building, she saw James Tolan pull up in his usual vehicle. The pair went inside and that was the last time they were seen alive. A little over an hour later, a customer came in and found that the pair had been attacked and appeared to be lifeless. Officers that were ironically on their way to buy their wives flowers for the special day heard the radio call and swiftly changed directions to attend to the crime scene. Carrie and James were found fully clothed, lying on their sides. After an in-depth inspection of the scene, officers came to the conclusion that both victims had been instructed to kneel before they were fired at from behind and slumped over. The entire crime scene occurred on the stockroom floor, but the victims were a short distance away from each other. James was leaning against a corner off to the side, and Carrie was lying toward the center of the room. She had one arm raised over her head as though she tried to block the shot in the final seconds of her life. All of the basic protocols were followed by investigators and they documented witness statements collected at the crime scene and any possible evidence. The shop hadn't been robbed or ransacked in any way, suggesting that the crime was done by someone the pair knew. Different suspicions, possible leads, and theories ran wild for a few months before there was nothing to be done more on the case. The case is now cold, but is still assigned to a specialist that frequently devotes his time to the case. In fact, as recent as 2018, the same detective conducted new interviews with family members, friends, and witnesses despite the 30-year gap. 
So while it's sad to think that this Valentine's Day crime remains unsolved, there's a sliver of hope as long as it's being granted some sort of attention. Number 3 A young woman from the Philippines named China Rose met her groom-to-be in February of 1988 when David Sims, a man 20 years her senior, embarked on a business trip to her hometown. The pair got married and China Rose, now adorning the last name Sims, was taken to England. Although it's unclear if China was truly in love, her new life in England where her husband had bought them a home wasn't all that bad in the beginning. After some time though, the relationship began quickly declining. The couple are faced with cultural differences, powerful feuds, and other arguments that can be expected for serious relationships. For them, however, things were much worse than they seemed. China had told her sister that Dave was violent towards her. According to the later reports, there was no denying that China was afraid of her husband, who had allegedly threatened to hire a hitman to take her life if she didn't stay in line. The last time that China was ever seen alive was on Valentine's Day in 1993. Her family that lived in England organized a themed party and invited everyone to join in on the love-spreading holiday. Although China joined in on the fun, her relatives could tell that something was eating away at her. During some conversations, China mentioned that she wanted to return to the Philippines. She stated that she missed her family, especially her father, but the main factor in her desire to depart was her husband and his behavior. The party was the last time that anyone spoke to China. She promised to stay in touch, specifically agreeing that she would call when she arrived home safely, but still, she was never heard from again. Some time passed and it became all too obvious that something was wrong. A short search was conducted for the missing woman, but nothing turned up. China was officially considered missing and the main suspect of her disappearance was her husband. According to friends and relatives, there wasn't much doubt that David was somehow involved. It seemed that police and investigators had an easy case on their hands until they realized that Dave had vanished as well. He was nowhere to be found, and the last known sighting of him was two months after the disappearance, when neighbors reported that he stopped by the house to gather some belongings. The search and investigation carried on for a few years before a man named Jeffrey Paston was located. He was the former roommate of the missing couple, and he explained that David asked him to sell the house. He offered Jeffrey little information concerning his whereabouts, his intentions, or his missing wife. Either way, Jeffrey agreed to help, and after the house was sold, he was instructed to put the money in an account under the name Anthony Peter Lewis. It turned out that this was an alias that David was using at another time in life. After another gap of time, a man claiming to represent David arrived at the bank and collected the $40,000. A decent lump sum of money was left in the account and apparently has not been touched or even checked on in the years since. No one besides David and China have any clue what happened on that tragic Valentine's Day. And until one of them resurfaces, there's no way to uncover the truth. Number 2 Richard Gene Hammond was 63 years old when he lost his life. He was working as a director of transport in Denver, Colorado's District 49. Friends, relatives, and colleagues described him as a hardworking, devoted, skilled, and honest man. On Valentine's Day in 2017, Richard woke up hours before sunrise to prepare his work commute, which usually took between 30 minutes and an hour. He left his home between 3.30 and 4 a.m. It seemed like, despite the romantic holiday, Richard was going to experience a mundane day just like any other. But that's not all that happened. Richard never arrived at work that morning. His concerned employers and co-workers tried to call his cell phone countless times. It was unlike Richard to miss a day of work, but it was even more concerning they didn't call at the very least. A phone call was made to his wife to check if he was taking a sick day. In a brief panic, she explained that he had already left for work, and if something did happen, he'd not returned home. Obviously, stress-fueled speculations began, in theories that he had perhaps been in a wreck were considered. Before police had even been contacted in the disappearance, Richard's car was found by pure coincidence, parked in a dark alley no more than a mile from his home. Inside the car, an even more chilling discovery was made. Richard was buckled into the driver's seat, no longer alive. The victim had clearly been taken out with a gun, but the motive was uncertain. Nothing had been stolen, or even searched through, as the attacker had no other intention other than taking this man's life. It was assumed that some sort of enemy of his was responsible, but the ongoing investigation hadn't turned up any possible suspects. This is partly due to the fact that most of the people that knew Richard agreed that he was a wonderful man and friendly. Additionally, the scene held almost no evidence that could be used to track down the criminal. The only DNA or fingerprints found inside and outside the vehicle belonged to Richard. 
and to this day, three years after the crime occurred, there's still no sign or hope of solving the case. Number 1 Some information on this case will not be discussed due to its graphic nature, but Art and Lois Serrett were the parents of a 39-year-old woman named Jodine. On Valentine's Day in 2007, they witnessed a tragic crime and looked their daughter's attacker right in the face without even knowing it. Art and Lois had a very close relationship with their daughter for many years. However, what really kept them so tight-knit was the fact that Jodine was mentally handicapped. She was intelligent and capable enough to live on her own, a fact that was agreed upon by her medical care team. However, an agreement between her and her parents and her doctors required that her parents visit her daily to check in. So on this Valentine's Day, her parents made a routine visit to Jodine's apartment. They knocked several times, but she never answered the door. They used their copy of the key to open the door, but the chain lock was in place, so they couldn't fully step inside. They continued to call for Jodine, and finally, Art burst the door down and rushed into the unit. He went straight for the bedroom, where he found his daughter was engaged in intimate relations with a strange man. Art was angry in a sense, and demanded that the man get dressed and leave. As he did so, Jodine's parents waited outside of the hallway. He walked right past them, making eye contact with them every step that he marched out the door. The pair continued to wait for their daughter, assuming that she was getting dressed. And a decent amount of time passed before they realized that something must have been wrong. They wondered if perhaps Jodine was upset that they barged in, and made her new friend leave. The couple entered the bedroom to have a heart-to-heart -heart with their daughter, and unfortunately, they spotted a scene that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Jodine had passed away and was lying unclothed on her bed. It would later be confirmed that the suspect took her life while her parents were standing right outside the door. Jodine's parents were able to provide a fairly detailed description of the suspect. Additionally, the man's DNA was successfully collected from her body. Despite these advantages in the case, though, a suspect has still not been found, and the case is nothing more than a mystery at this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. If you loved it, maybe consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.